why do we give Aljamain Sterling a hard fucking time? But Islam Makachev, we, we give him everything. Because what Aljamain Sterling has done in his division is way more impressive what Islam Makachev has done. And we paint this nasty picture of Aljamain Sterling. And I've been one of those people too. And I'm starting to give Aljamain Sterling his credit. He's won, you know, and he's beating up people too. He's been dominant fights. You know, Islam had one really good fight and that was against Charles. Hey guys, welcome to the False Nine Podcast here with episode 152, no shit, 153, we're here, uh, we're back to two episodes a week, so it's time to get creative, time to, you know, talk, 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 and talk, and hopefully the content I've been putting out is a lot better, been working on it a lot harder lately, so hopefully you guys are enjoying that, and um, I mean, today's episode is really going to be about UFC talking about what it means to be a champion in the UFC uh, and what it means to be like a GOAT, you know, whether it's in boxing, maybe talk a little bit about boxing, maybe UFC, maybe UFC. Um, I've been having this idea for a while now, a few episodes. I've been wanting to do this. And um, and the only reason why is it all started when I was talking a little bit about uh, Islam, right? And then, you know, a hater way, whatever. I was just saying that, you know, he's not like a real champion or like I don't really see him like as a champion, things like that. And so, you know, I saw a lot of comments. It kind of got to me. I started thinking, you know, and um, I was like, well, OK, like, let's see, you know, what does it take to be a UFC champion? Let me look at my favorite UFC champions that I've seen. Right. Um, so I looked some up and um, let's see, I I started with. I started with Connor because uh, I, he's the first person I thought about, you know, and I know he, he never defended a belt, but the way he became champion, right? Like the, the build up versus someone like Islam. And it's crazy that I made a video. This, I'm making this video like this idea came from from the haters of, of the Islam comments, you know, because people are like, why do you hate on him? Like, you know, or, or why are you talking mess about him? And like, I'm like, bro, it's just the way he got there. Right. Uh, you know, Islam never fought a ranked opponent before Charles Oliveira. You know, all his, I mean, he fought, I mean, Bobby Green. I don't know if it was uh, Wonder Boy or, uh, <clears throat> I, th- I want to say it was Wonder Boy or Thompson. I don't know. It was one of them. I get him confused. But um, none of them were ranked, you know, and, and Bobby Green as well. And that's like, that's been my issue, right? You know, versus, you know, like Connor, when, when Connor was moving up, you know, and, and making a name for himself. I know he fought like Chad Mendes, uh, Dustin Poirier, and then he got the title fight against Aldo, and then he got another title fight against Eddie Alvarez, right? Um, and then that's how, obviously, how he became champion, you know, and it wasn't like he fought a whole bunch of, like Connor fought a whole bunch of no names and then became champion, you know, because he did fight Chad Mendes. That was a tough-ass fight, you know, and Four year wasn't too much of a fight. I want to. I want to know who, who else he had fought in. You know before, or like you know before, uh, or maybe he did the back to back belts like that. I don't know. I don't remember. Right, but that's just one example of it. And I started with the smallest guy first, right, and then we get to somebody like uh, I can't believe I can't wrote him down, like John Jones. So John Jones has one of the. I mean, he's the greatest of all time. Right in in his road to being champions it was one of the most impressive I've ever seen. And then how long he was champion. But that's all the people he fought. Right, and and John Jones is like he's him. And when I talk about Islam, you know the the haters be like they. They make it seem like he's John Jones elite or level, right? And I'm like, bro, John Jones is where he's at because of who he fought, you know, and how many times he defended his title and the way he did it. Like, you know, all, all of them, but like a few of them went to distance. And that's just John Jones on the list, right? So then let's get to another impressive uh, record. You know, uh, we're going to look up Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva has another one of those amazing, amazing records as well. <laughs> All right, so his title run. Uh, let's see, UFC sixty four. Wow, he fought Rich 
Franklin. So again, a, a lot, and what I'm trying to get to is that he, you know Anderson Silva, John Jones, they've all had impressive, 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 you know, like title runs, and you know, as a champion. And again, like that's my like pedal still where I'm like, that's the motherfucking guy, right? And even someone like Charles Oliveira, or uh, who's the other guy that I like, Brandon Moreno, like. He, I don't hold them to that level because I don't think they're there yet or if they ever will be. The only the other person I think about that is is someone like Canelo, you know, someone like Mayweather, which I'm not a fan of, but you know that that's like top tier, you know. Um and there's some people that try to hold like Khabib up there, Islam right there, and uh, I'm just like, "Bro, I just don't fucking see it," you know. And all respect, those guys are fucking dogs. You know, I just don't, I can't, I can't wrap my head around it, you know, and, and I'm not hating. I'm, I'm, I promise you guys, I am not hating. So let's talk about Khabib's uh, title run, right? So he fought, uh, I'm not sure who this guy is, Al La Quinta, defended against Connor, Dustin, and Johnson, uh, then Justin. He also beat Dos Anjos, Barbosa. Um, but those were his fights, right? And again, ah, Khabib probably won every round. He probably lost. You know, one or two rounds his whole career. But again, probably one of the best at 155 that's ever going to exist. You know, probably the best right now ever, you know, which is Khabib. Because no one has dominated like like he has and in the division at least. And lost like very, very, very few rounds. So now we move on to Charles, one of my favorite, favorite, you know, UFC fighters. So it starts off, he beats Ferguson. Uh, he gets a submission. He fights Chandler for the title, and then after that, he goes and fights, uh, who is it, uh, Dustin Poirier, and then he goes and he beats them, gets a, the, the submission, then he goes and fights Justin Gaethje, but loses, uh, loses, gets stripped by the title by being overweight, which is insane, and then he loses to uh, Islam Akachev. So, and he beat the, the, like, the toughest guys. The toughest guys in the division in a moment where Dustin Poirier was coming out of beating Connor, knocking him out. Uh, to, I mean, beating him twice, arguably the second time. And someone like Michael Chandler, who was hot. We didn't really know too much about him. And someone like Justin Gaethje, which we knew he's dangerous. And now he looks even more dangerous than ever. But it's like Charles beat those guys and the way he beat those guys he either finished he finished them by submission or tko right so now we we move on and we start talking about you know islam Akachev's title run or, or title reign at the moment you know i'm not sure I, i'm i'm not sure who he fought before and i'm not saying that in like an arrogant way or in a negative way but you know he ends up getting a title shot against charles makes charles look super small and then uh you know, fights Volkanovski, which, you know, I thought it was pretty crazy that, you know, he wanted to fight someone else, you know, outside of his division. I don't think there's, besides Conor McGregor, I don't think there's ever been a, a champion who decides to fight outside the division after their first title fight and not defending the title at all. You know, it's only been Conor that's been able to do that. So, you know, he does that, fights against Volkanovski, which is a, a weight class under, and arguably loses the fight, you know, and, and he still has the belt. And okay, he's he's the champion, you know. And people right now are like, yeah, he's the goat, he's the best, he's gonna be the best, and da 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 da, right? And um, you know, I'm just like, look, I don't. Again, I don't hit on Islam, and I, and I would like for Islam to be a dominant champion. You know, I I like fucking love to see when when a champion goes and defends his title in his own division. You know, someone like Israel Adesanya, John Jones, Anderson Silva, uh, Khabib did it. And I, that's all I asked for, you know? That's all I asked for from Islam Akachev. All I asked for him is for him to defend his title at 155, you know, run it back with Charles, fight Justin Gaethje, maybe fight like either uh, Chandler or Benil Dirouche, fight one of those guys 
and then you know run it back with Volk. And then go run it with whoever's champion, whether it's Leon Edwards or Kobe Covington, and then just fight the next contender. Like that's all. That's all I ask for from him. You know, and you guys again, the the, the people will be like, "Hey, well, well, he's already champion. He beat Charles Oliveira, and he ended his streak." And I'm like, "Look, man. Like again, and I keep saying this. Um, when he fought Charles Oliveira, he went through one camp. He went through one weight cut in one fight." With Volkanovski was the same thing, you know. That's two weight, ca- two, two camps, two weight cuts, two fights. You know, and uh, Volkanovski's streak was crazy. It was like you know twelve or thirteen fights, something like that. Charles Oliveira, uh, another long streak. It was like close to ten. He and he broke those two streaks, right? Which is fucking impressive that he broke those streaks because those guys are on fire. Da 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 da, and um. You know, people say like, oh, he broke those streaks. And I'm like, yeah, but this is like the the sport of boxing. I mean, not boxing. This is the sport of UFC, a comeback sport where anything can happen. Leon Edwards had, I mean, Usman, he had one of the craziest uh, runs, you know, as a champion. Hadn't lost in so many fights. And then he goes loose to Leon Edwards in the fifth round, bro. Like that shit happens. And it's just like, and then they run it back, of course, and then he ends up losing again. But, you know, the the streak thing doesn't weigh that much to me. Like, oh, well, he ended the streak, da 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 Like, it's just not, I don't know, it, it's not impressive. Like, that's the argument. And then they try to, like, involve Volkanovski's streak, which, you know, Volkanovski's streak to me is not, he didn't break his streak because they fought at 155, you know. So I don't, I don't see that. But, again, I mean, that's all I want from Islam. And then oh, there was another champion. Oh, Volkanovski. You know, Volkanovski is another one who has been champion at 145 for the longest now since, what, 2018, 2019? We're in 2023. is like four years, you know, as champion. Um, that's someone that you can call the, you know, close to the GOAT, greatest of all time. Someone who's trying to join that conversation is someone like Aljamain Sterling. Aljamain Sterling is trying to, is going to join that conversation of, of one of the best. You know, he's on a crazy streak, too. And um, we're not giving him that credit for the people who he's beating. I know they're not the best wins, but why do we give Aljamain Sterling a hard fucking time? But Islam Akachev, we, we give him everything. Everything. Because what Aljamain Sterling has done in his division is way more impressive what Islam Akachev has done. And we, and we paint this nasty picture of Aljamain Sterling. And I've been one of those people too. And I'm starting to give Aljamain Sterling his credit because he's beating people. He's won, you know, and he's beating up people too. He's been dominant fights. You know, Islam had two, one really good fight, and that was against Charles. So it's like that when you start to see that dominance, and that's what I'm getting to is like these, I'm, I'm naming these fighters because these. Dominant performances, these dominant runs, it's just like, man, that shit's impressive as fuck. You know, Charles Oliver loses his title, and then look what he do what look what he does to the hottest guy in the division, Benil De Rouge. He fucking takes him out in two, three rounds. Ends his streak. You know what I'm saying? But we're not giving him all this credit, right? When Charles Oliver got that win, everybody was quiet. All people had to say is that, oh, well, he's going to lose to, to, to Islam, blah, blah, blah. Everybody thought Benil was going to win that fight. Everybody thought that, bro. And then he did that shit in dominant fashion. I'm just like, man, that's, that's someone you call the fucking man, right? Because the way he handled these top opponents, the way Khabib handled it, the way John Jones handled it, the way that... Uh, Israel Adesanya Israel Adesanya is not talked about enough For his skills You know he's probably the The best person in the UFC Besides John Jones You know And um, That's that's a dominant champion That's a real champion That's pound for pound That's one of the greatest of all time That's what I call one of the greatest of all time Someone who's dominant And does and, if they lose, they come back. Look what Israel Adesanya lost. Nobody took anything away from him. Charles Oliveira lost. We took a world, we took away the world from him. And look what Israel Adesanya did. Came back and got his fucking belt back. 
Charles Oliveira didn't fight the belt. Didn't fight for the belt, but the way he came back was like, fuck, crazy. So that's that, you know, a little bit of UFC champion talk. The other thing I want to talk about is, uh, you know, I see a lot of comments, casual, blah, blah. You don't know what you're talking about. And look, guys, I've never trained for MMA. I've never gotten on a mat. I, I'd love to, you know, just to train and, and experience that. Um, I've never bought, I never, I don't think I've ever, I got in some of what of a fight before, but I'm not someone who, who's in the sport. Right. And, and I think, and I speak out of, uh, just as a, like a, a viewer, like a real strong viewer of the sport. Like I said, I watch UFC fights on a daily basis. I watch all pay-per-views. Uh, I, I watch most fight nights. Um, I, wa- I follow a lot of fighters, you know, on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, whatever it may be. Like, I'm just a, a big fan, and I like to see what these fighters do, what they go through, you know, through their camps, things like that. I just like getting that insight, and, and I kind of live the fighter's experience through the fighters. And that's just what I do, and I love talking about this shit. You know, I get very passionate about it, and I like talking about this and that, and and you can call it a casual, you can call it a fan, you can call me, you know, I can be called whatever, right? But I think that's okay <laughs> to be a casual. I think it's okay that you get together and watch people fight, you know, on fight night. Just because you may uh, watch a little bit more or you might have, or because you train in MMA or you do jujitsu, that doesn't mean like you're entitled to more opinions, you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't, like, that to me, I was just like, bro, if you train, good for you. I don't give a fuck, you know? And nobody else should. Just because you train doesn't mean, like, you might not, you might know what you're talking about, you know? But it's just like, let me be a casual. Let me watch the fights and eat my pizza when I watch it. And that's okay. And anyone who's out there who has other opinions, because I see a lot of likes, but I don't see a lot of good comments. I wish I did. I wish I, I wish people put in the comments how they really felt versus just uh, uh, opposing against me, right? I want to see, like, oh, like, some wild shit, but not, like, negative stuff or whatever. Like, there's some Twitter accounts that are very bold and popular for their hot takes in UFC. Same thing on Reddit, and a lot of people agree with those. And I'll be on the same boat, sometimes opposing, but sometimes I'll be on the same boat. And, and this is why I do it, because I feel like... Uh, the way I feel about things, it's, I like to think it's unique, but probably not unique enough where uh, I'm not the only one who thinks it. Because I know I'm not. I'm sure there's a lot of people that think the way I think. I just like putting it out there and I want to kind of speak for, for everyone else who's maybe a little too shy or doesn't or is not as confident as posting it or speaking about it. And I have goals to to work with the UFC. You know, this is why I do it too. work with the UFC, work with athletes, uh, interview athletes. You know, talk to them, have podcasts with them, things like that. I love, that's that's going to be the future for the false line, and it's going to happen. You know, we'll get better throughout throughout the time. Um, but yeah, let's be casuals. It's okay to be a casual. There's nothing wrong with it. So yeah. Last thing I want to talk about is about a Wonder Boy getting paid from Dana White. It's a real uh, what you gonna call it? It's a real like wishy-washy situation right because we don't know the details we don't know the contract we don't know like what's happening on what's happening behind the scenes so you know wonder boy made weight this other guy did it he weighed a little bit more and i think he weighed like three pounds more and obviously he's going to gain a lot of weight my first opinion you know like first and this is not like how it should be but this is my initial thought i think for one wonder boy was scared to have that fight he didn't want to fight a heavier guy. He was scared. Um, and this guy already had the weight advantage. And I think he tried to find an excuse to get paid. And he posted about it and talked about it on social media to pressure the UFC and Dana White to get him paid. I think that's my first initial thought. You know, someone who a Wonder Boy five or eight years, five years younger would have took the fight. How many fighters have we seen that take these fights? 
right? And you might think like, oh, well, it's a risk for the fighter. This is and that. It's a risk no matter what, you know. And it says uh, they try to make it as even possible by having weight classes and certain rules and things like that. And we all know these fighters cut weight and then they they blow up a little bit the next day for fight night. <laughs> so, you know, I hope Wonder Boy gets paid. Um, now we don't know how many fights he was offered or who he was offered to fight. I know he was offered to fight the same guy just at a catch weight and, um, and whatever. Now, if he was to take that fight and there was an incentive like, Hey, we'll pay you a little bit extra. This guy didn't make his way. So we'll pay you like 10 or 15 K more, whatever the number is. That's cool. I'm okay with that. Right. As a fighter, I would have been cool with that. Um, hey, we, this is our backup for, you know, maybe there's, maybe they need to start having backups for each fight, you know, or a pool of backups and you're going to, you're going to probably have to give them a chunk of change. So it's just like, what well, do you invest in the backups or do you invest, uh, in paying in the person who's taking the fight and taking the greater risk, you know, you could say. So, um, and Dana way, Dana White made a good point. He said, we offered the kid to fight and he didn't want to fight. And I'm like, damn, like, you know, you are in the fight business. You didn't want to fight. Obviously, obviously, this guy didn't make weight. And, you know, you can make that argument. But then again, if you're a UFC fighter um, and, and you choose not to fight, because Wonder Boy chose not to fight. He could have fought. He chose not to. And it's just like, well, bro, you didn't want to fight. You get paid to fight. You get paid your full purse to fight. Now, and if I was Dana White in a bit or in that business, I would have paid if if since Wonder Boy didn't fight, I would have paid him partially, and that's it. You know, because you get paid full purse if you fight. That's just how I mean. In my opinion, that's how I think how it works. So again, I think. Wonder Boy didn't take the fight and, you know, maybe he was, I don't know. I, I just don't like how he, he's doing it. I think he should get paid something, you know, but I'm not a fan of how he's handling the situation and how he expects to get paid the full amount because, you know, we all have jobs and we get paid to, to do our job, you know, and sometimes we fuck around. But initially, at the end of the day, when there's something that needs to be done that falls under a job description, we kind of got to do it, and that kind of applies to this guy, too. So that's how I feel about it. Guys, you know, thank you for watching this episode. I know I was a little kind of all over the place in the beginning, but hopefully um, you guys still enjoy it. Next week, we have Sugar Sean, Aljamain Sterling next Saturday. I'll have an episode for you guys on Tuesday. Got to figure out what we're going to talk about. Definitely going to be structured a little bit better. Um, but, guys, we're back uploading twice a week. Uh, if you're a Spanish speaker, uh, Spanish podcast is up too. So check that out. All right, guys. I hope you guys had a great week. Hope you guys get paid today um, and enjoy the weekend. You know, make sure you you take a, a breath and enjoy the weekend and get ready um, to recharge for the following week. Peace.